and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, this evening um, we're going to begin with the annual truth and budgeting hearing for the 2019-20 school year um, for fiscal year 2019 to 20. Tonight's meeting will begin with a public hearing. This is the time where the board will receive public comment on the proposed budget for 2019-2020. East China School District cannot adopt its proposed budget until after a public hearing. Copies of the proposed budget, including the proposed property tax millage rate, has been available for public inspection within the administrative offices and on the district's website under the transparency section. At this time, the board will receive public comments. Are there any public comments related to the proposed budget? <coughs> I'm sorry, do you have a comment? Yes. Yes, please. Um, my main comment, you may know me as a bus driver, so is she. Uh, back in 2014, I know Jeannie and Amy um, did great research about how how privatizing never really saves you money. Might may save you pennies in the beginning, but it never saves you anything in the long haul. And you end up with, I hate to say it, a real poor pool of people left to drive because I, I'm sure you all are aware that we got one application last year. And well, we actually got a couple we had one that got to number part two of becoming a bus driver. I know one of the apps ended up being a ended up going to jail, and the other one couldn't part couldn't couldn't get past part two. So we've drawn from this pool of East China drivers or East China taxpayers, I should say, people that live here, and we aren't getting anybody new coming in because you guys have. Uh, basically not made it as a good of a job as it was back when I applied 20 years ago and became a bus driver. And I have 20 years experience and you have about 17 of us that are being forced to go drive for other districts if you guys privatize completely. And if you ask any of the people who are driving, and there's Patty's one of them, she would rather be an East China employee. And even if it you know, knock down what she gets, she would still rather work for the school, not for a private company. I won't work for a private company. If you make that poor decision that Amy and Jeannie both had, have done research back in 2014, it's a really bad idea. <laughs> and I hope you look at all of the numbers, not just what you would save initially. And the other thing is, is fuel. I don't think a private company legally can use our fuel discount being us you know a public school and there's there's so many other elements to it i mean we're a public school we're not a private company but i i could go on a million tangents because i hate privatizing if you're public you stay public 100 percent. you look at richmond they lost all their drivers three years ago they said oh we messed up and they came back and they became a public you know, a public employees because they couldn't keep drivers. Every driver we train at East China's, you know, bill, they're all, they all end up going to New Haven, Richmond, Anchor Bay, Romeo. And I mean, we're wasting our money by training good people from our district that care and love our kids. And I just think uh, privatizing, you're ruining our community completely ruining it and I have to walk out and I have when my kids ask me in June aren't you gonna miss me this summer I said it might be a lot longer than that and I won't lie to them because I'm not a liar <laughs> so anyway I hope you consider it so I just want to say that I don't like the idea of outsourcing the taxpayers money to <coughs> private companies that do not contribute back into our community I'm nervous <laughs> Thank you. Are there any other public comments? Okay, let the record reflect that the comments were presented. And then at this time, we will close the public hearing and proceed to the regular board meeting. 
So the next item on the agenda is items of interest, recognition, and inquiry. Um, Board of Education members, do we have anything? Karen? I'd just like to thank everyone who was involved in the three graduation ceremonies. They were amazing. Um, and especially to the custodians at Marine City because they had to set up and then they had to take it down real quick for their all night party. So, um, you know, the custodians, the secretaries who helped put it on and all the principals and everyone, it was just a lovely day. Agreed. Anybody else? Okay, I just want to make a quick mention about the um, summer meetup and eat up. I don't know if this this is our fourth, fifth, sixth consecutive year that mm -hmm. um, we have been providing um, lunches for the students of the district, and actually it extends past the students of the district. Um, but the lunches will be served; they're free. They'll be served at Ele Eddie Elementary, Marine City Middle School, and East China Park. From let's see, in at Eddie. They will be there through um, from June 24th through August 16th from 11.15 to noon. Mm -hmm. um, June 29th through August 16th at Marine City Middle from 11.15 to 12.15. And June 24th through August 1st from 11 to 11.20 at the East China Township Park. So I'm sure this information is on our website. I think it'd be great if we could just let everybody we know um, know that you know this free service is available to the students in our district thank you Suzanne thank you um, I would like to take a moment to welcome Jill Bodkin to the East China team she will be our new speech and language pathologist um, she was a long-term sub uh, li this school year and we are excited to have her with us full-time also I want to thank everyone for another great school year and I wish uh, a relaxing summer thank you so the next item is our consent agenda, <coughs> and a motion is needed for the approval of minutes from the special board meeting of May 17th, the regular board meeting of May 20th, and the special board meeting of May 28th, approval of payment of bills, the financial statement, schedule of investments, the MHSAA annual participation resolution, and the status of probationary teachers achieving tenure status. So moved. Support. Sup any comments or questions? Okay, everybody please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, motion carries. At this time, we move to recognition of persons wishing to address the board. Um, Don, do we have any green cards? Oh, okay, okay. All right, so then we're gonna move on to our board action agenda items. Fiscal year 2018-2019 amended budget. Per administration recommendation, the Board of Education approves the fiscal year 2018-2019 amended budget. A motion is needed. So moved. Support. Any comments or questions? Okay, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. The next item is the General Appropriations Act resolution for fiscal year 2020. Per administration recommendation, the Board of Education approves the General Appropriations Act resolution as read for fiscal year 2019 to 20. Motion is needed. So moved. Support. Any comments or questions? No. Okay, all in favor of signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, that motion carries. The next item is the 2019 millage levies resolution. Per administration recommendation, the Board of Education approves the resolution certifying the 2019 millage levies. Certification of the 2019 tax rate, be it resolved that the following be the tax rates for the 2019 tax rolls for the East China School District, St. Clair County for the operation of the school and debt service. Non-homestead operation was 18 mills. Sinking fund was 0.3992 mills. Debt retirement, 1.68 mills. A motion is needed. So moved. Support. Any comments or questions? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, that motion carries. So D, 
Superintendent of Schools contract. Uh, at this time, I'm going to turn this over to our committee chair, Mr. Disselraff. All right, so uh, part of our responsibility as a school board is to annually uh, review the performance of the superintendent. And so we typically do that in a committee of three, which this year was myself and Mrs. Frank and Mrs. Murphy. And uh, during that meeting, we use the approved um, tool. We, the state approved certain number of, uh, of rubrics, tools for the purpose of evaluation. Um, so we, we have that tool available to us. We've had training in how to uh, use that tool. Uh, so we met last week with uh, Mrs. Saibula and went through. There are about 30, 33 different standards that are a part of that rubric. Each one uh, has a descriptor about what it means to be highly effective, effective, minimally effective, or ineffective in that area. So we went through that kind of standard by standard with Mrs. Saibula, and uh, she was able to pro provide information to us about the things that she does re in that area or in those areas. And then uh, we were able to give a rating in each of those areas. Um, in each area that we, that we discussed and rated, uh, she was either rated as effective or highly effective uh, overall. And that's in front of you right now. You see the, the actual final uh, version of the, uh, of the rubric. So then there are five different sections. Each of those sections is scored. All those threes and fours are added up and averaged. And there's a certain weight for each, each of those areas as well. And so if you turn uh, through those, if you turn past those five different areas, they include things like staff relations and business and finance. If you turn past all of those, you'll get to a section that talks about, um, well, a section that averages those scores uh, from those five areas. And that's on page 15. And all of those scores with their weights added together uh, give a score of 94%. And then the next page, page 16, looks at student growth data. And Mrs. Saibula went through with us. And she pulled up uh, data from my school data that has uh, different index scores for all the schools in our district. And she went through that information with us and what each of those scores means and represents. And based on that information, uh, we were able to make a determination about student growth. And then the final section uh, also included in that data section is progress towards district goals. And so she provided information uh, related to those areas it's described in the box, uh, progress towards school improvement plans, looking at SAT data at the high schools and uh, some, other, some other benchmarks to get that rating. So all of that is added up together on the last page, page 17, uh, to come to an overall total score of uh, 90%, which is in the, the highly effective range. And it's also the score that she uh, the way that she was evaluated last year as well, same score. So are there any, any questions about the, the rubric, the process? The only, the only thing I'll add to that is um, one, one thing that uh, we're going to improve upon for next year is, is the process uh, should be more of a, a check. There should be more checkpoints along the way. And that was part of our discussion when we met with Mrs. Saibula. Um, and she presented to the three of us a, a plan for a, a calendar with checkpoints. And I know she'll share that with the rest of the board as well uh, for next year. So that would start us right off in July with setting goals for next, for next evaluation. year. Evaluation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks to the committee for doing this. Yeah, a lot of work. <laughs> Okay, so the Board of Education, the, excuse me, the recommended action is that the Board of Education approve the contract extension with Mrs. Suzanne Sibula as Superintendent of Schools for the 2019-20 school year through June 30th, 2022. Motion is needed. So moved. 
support. Oh, any additional comments or questions? I just want to clarify because there are kind of two parts here, right? We have the, the, the contract and the evaluation, right. which are kind of two, two things that are together but, but separate as well. So we're voting on the contract today, but then we're, we'll vote on the evaluation next meeting. Is that right? Or do we vote on both of those today? Um, our, pol our policy has been to review one meeting and vote the next. So we'll vote on the actual evaluation at the next. Okay. So then this is um, this is a vote on the contract, contract yeah. extending the contract based on that an official evaluation. Correct. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Okay. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, yeah, thank thank you, you. Suzanne. <laughs> So that brings us to the administrator contracts. Um, the administration is recommending that the board approve annual extensions for the individual employee agreements for the listed administrators. Don Dimmick, Lindsey Grange, Kirk Grizelka, Craig Headley, David Simpson, and Tina Thrift. Motion is needed. So moved. Support. Is there any comments or questions regarding these contracts? Okay, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, so that carries. Um, item seven is uh, items for next board meeting. That will be our organizational meeting. And at this time, we are adjourned. <laughs>